So now, question number 10 from June 2019, the last question in this paper. And this is a question here. We have a, a curve, y equals f of x, where f of x is equal to x minus 4 times 2x plus 1 squared. The curve touches the x-axis at the point P and crosses the x-axis at the point Q. State the coordinates of the point P. So we should know that um, such a, a curve, which is factorized like this, when you have a single root, which is basically, you know, it crosses the x-axis first of all when y is equal to 0. When y equals 0, you have x minus 4 times 2x plus 1 squared equals 0. So either x minus 4 is 0, in which case x is equal to 4, or 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, in which case x is equal to minus a half. But what we can say here, because this is a repeated factor, you can say it's minus a half twice, because you end up with 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. So you get x equals minus a half twice. Okay, so this is called a repeated root. Whenever you have a bracket that's squared, it's a repeated root. What actually happens is that's the point where um, the curve cuts through the x-axis. This is the type of point where it has a single root where it, sorry, that's a point where it touches the x-axis, it turns on the x-axis. This is the point where it cuts through the x-axis. So when it's a double root, when it's a repeated root, it turns on the x-axis without cutting through it. When it's a single root, it cuts through the x-axis. So this particular um, graph, if we were to make a sketch, which we don't actually have to do, but just to just illustrate to you, if you make a little sketch of it, it cuts through the x-axis at when x equals 4, it touches the x-axis at x equals minus a half, it hits the y-axis at minus 4, because if you think about the constants, it can be minus 4 times 1. Okay, so through minus 4, it, it kind of cuts through the y-axis. So it's going to, and it's, it's, it touches the x-axis. So it's a type of curve where you have a positive x cubed. So it's going to go this type of shape, up and up. So it's going to touch the x-axis at minus half. So it's going to go something like this. It's going to turn at minus a half, cut through at minus 4, and then cut through at 4 on the x-axis. It will look something like that. So we don't have to actually draw all of this, but just understand when you have a repeated root, that's where it touches the x-axis. And it says the curve touches the x-axis at the point P. So they're saying the coordinates of the point P are going to be minus a half and a zero. That's what we have to see. So you can do this question. It's only worth one mark. You don't have to show any steps like this. I'm just trying to explain for those of you that might not understand. Okay, so as soon as you see the word touches x-axis, you know ah, that must be the repeated root. That's where it touches the x-axis, and the repeat, which is a sing the sorry, the root which is a single root, is where it cuts through the x-axis. Okay, all right. Then it says find f dash of x means find the gradient function. That means differentiate f of x. Now, in order to differentiate this, what we have to do is we have to first expand the brackets. So we have x minus four times. Now, if you expand that, you get 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. That's how you expand a perfect square. You square the first term, you square the last term to give you the, the, last, uh, the final term at the end, the constant, and then you do 2 times the product of these two. So 2 times 2x times 1 is 4x. That's the middle term. And now we have to expand that further. So we have f, f of x is equal to, that's going to be 4x cubed plus 4x squared plus x and then going to have minus 16x squared and minus 16x and minus 4. Okay, as you can see that's where it crosses the y-axis. So f of x, okay, you've got only one x cubed term which is 4x cubed. You've got 4x squared minus 16x squared which is minus 12x squared. And then you've got the x terms. You've got plus x minus, 50, minus 16x, which is um, minus 15x. And then you've got your constant minus 4. So that's f of x. We have to find the differential of this function, f dash of x, which is a gradient function. So you multiply power, and then you take one from the power. So that's 12x squared. And you've got minus 24 x and you've got minus 15x becomes minus 15 
Remember, this is like x to the power 1, so you multiply by the power, you get minus 15, x to the power 0, which is 1, and minus 4, the constant dis disappears, because this is like minus 4 times x to the power 0, you multiply by the power, the whole thing becomes 0. So any constant just becomes uh, 0 when you differentiate it. So that is the answer to part B. Part C says, hence, means using what we just did here, show that the equation of the tangent to the curve at the point where x equals 5 over 2 can be expressed in the form y equals k, where k is a constant to be found. So this, what we have here, is called the gradient function. It tells us the gradient of the curve or any point that we need to find it. We need to find the gradient of the curve where x equals 5 over 2. So when x equals 5 over 2, the gradient function is going to be 12 times 5 over 2 squared minus 24 times 5 over 2 minus 15. So this is going to give us, that's 12 times 25 over 4 minus, this will cancel with that, giving you 12 times 5 which is 60 and you're going to have minus 15. Now this 4 and this 12 cancel out, leaving with 3, so you end up with uh, 75 minus 60 minus 15 which is going to be 0 okay 75 minus 60 is 15 minus 15 is 0 so therefore we can say that the gradient okay is equal to 0 so the gradient is 0 at the point where x equals 5 over 2 and we've got to find um, the coordinate the the, the basic the we got to find the, the equation of the curve. Well, obviously, if the gradient is equal to 0, okay, we want to find the y value, y equals k. So we're going to find what that k is. So we need to find the equation of the, of the line. So uh, basically, what we need to do now is we need to put the value of x, which is 5 over 2, back into the original function, okay, to find the y value when x is 5 over 2. So you're going to have f, f of x equals x minus 4 times 2x plus 1 squared. So you have the original function f of x equals x minus 4 times 2x plus 1 squared. Let's just make sure of that. x minus 4, 2x plus 1 squared, that's right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute x equals 5 over 2 in here. Okay, and that will tell us the y value. And x is 5 over 2, and that will be basically what y equals because that's what y equals when x is 5 over 2. So you've got 5 over 2 minus 4 times 2 times 5 over 2 plus 1 squared which is 5 over 2 minus 4 which is 5 over 2 minus uh, 8 over 2 which is minus 3 over 2 times and you're going to have that cancelled with that you're going to have 5 plus 1, which is 6. 6 squared is 36. Okay, and then you have the 2 and the 36 gives you 18. 2 times 18 is 36, that's right. Minus 3 times 18 is minus 30 and minus 24, which is minus 54. So we know that y is equal to negative 54 is the equation of the line. That's when the gradient of this function is equal to zero. We could have actually found that, uh, let's find out the values of x when this is equal to uh, zero, okay, where the gradient is equal to zero, and we could have factorized that, but I guess this is an easier way, okay? We could have done that. We could have factorized this, and or we could have, um, but we kind of did the same thing. We, we found that when x equals five over two, is substituted inside this function, the gradient becomes zero. Okay, so therefore that is going to be where the tangent is horizontal. So it's going to be of the form y equals k. So we put that value of x into the original function to find that value of y. So that's where y is minus 54. Okay, so I guess we did the same thing. All right, so that's perfectly fine to do it this way. Uh, now we got to answer part D. Okay, it says, state the possible values of A. It says, the curve with the equation y equals f of x, where f of x equals what we've given. Uh, the curve with the equation f of x plus A, where A is a constant, passes through the origin. So as we mentioned before, 
this curve it cuts the x-axis at 4 and it turns at minus a half and we mentioned it goes something like this let me just try doing one it goes like this and it goes down to minus 4 then it comes up through 4 all right now what we have to think about this is um, the curve where, uh, where y equals f of x plus a where a is a constant passes through the origin o state the possible values of a so we can see that f of x plus a is a translation of minus a zero okay it's inside the function so it's trans it's added to it's something it's something that's added inside the function the x is replaced by x plus a so it's a translation okay to the opposite side of whatever a is if a is positive then this will be the opposite sign it's going to go in the opposite direction so if it's for example f of x plus 3 goes three spaces to the left if x, f of x minus 3 will go three spaces to the right now we know um, that basically this curve is going to be translated horizontally okay I don't want that 4 to move with it. Let me just get rid of that 4. Ah, hold on. That's better. Okay, so I know that this curve is going to be translated horizontally. Okay, so there's two possible ways for um, the curve to pass through the origin. Okay, one is if it's like this. Okay, that's where the curve will basically touch the origin. Okay, so it passes through the origin here. Okay, so that's one situation. And that's where it's moved to the left, sorry, to the right by half a unit. So A could either be, if it moves to the right, A would be minus a half. Okay, that would be the, the, the F of X minus a half. It moves a half spaces, half spaces to the right. Okay, that's one option. The other option is that it cuts through the origin. This part passes through the origin over there. In which case, it's moved four spaces to the left. So that will be f of x plus 4. In that case, a is equal to 4. This means, uh, this means a translation of minus 4, 0. This means a translation of a half and zero okay so that's how you think about this if the original curve is translated horizontally which this is what it means and it passes through the origin that means either this point has moved through the or has gone through the origin in which case it has to move four spaces to the left in which case a has to be plus four or this part here where it's turning on the x-axis has is going to be passing to the origin, so it's moved half a space, half a space to the right, in which case um, a is going to be minus a half. Okay, so there's the answer to part D. And I hope that was clear, and that's that paper finished.